Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about overplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the wheelhouse and uh, pretty much we just, you know, we looked around there a bit, got out of there, we didn't learn too much other than that obviously Clover is really sad since the death of Snake, but that was already pretty obvious. So now we make our way through and see if there's anything else beyond the door that we already opened. The space they found themselves in outside of the wheelhouse was far too narrow to be called a hallway. On their left was a wooden door. Junpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. It was full of all manner of turn-of-the-century electronic equipment. Most of them were things they'd never seen before. They had no idea what they might have been for, let alone how to operate them. One smaller machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle. Ace seemed to recognize it. Ah, uh, yes, a telegraph key. These were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He turned and slowly took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read, Captain's Quarters. The Captain's Quarters? That's what it says? Then do you think... I am Zero, the captain of this ship. He swallowed. Junpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. We, she walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. It opened easily, and without so much as a pause, she walked in. Junpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw was a man on the floor, covered in blood. Junpei felt his body seize up. His mouth went dry and he felt very, very cold. The blood in his veins slowed to a crawl and his heart tightened like a fist. This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. Still, he had begun to accept that whatever it was he saw, whatever happened to him, was beyond his control. And whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. A sense of helplessness, of desperation, washed over him. It left a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body like acid. Then he realized they had yet to check the man's pulse. Perhaps he was still alive! Fueled by that spark of hope, Junpei ran to the man's body, and his heart fell. His fingers on the man's neck felt no pulse. His pupils had dilated, and he wasn't breathing. Junpei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. Junpei did not have to wonder long at what could have made such a wound. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by the axe. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched out around it. He was wearing the clothes of a ship's captain, although they were stained with blood. A captain. Did that mean this man was zero? In his left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was zero. It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. Heh. <laughs> Junpei couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it was a joke. We're being thrown right into another escape room, and this time there's a dead man on the floor, as well as blood on this chair right here. Uh, first thing we want to grab is right over here on the bedside table is a music box. Oh, it's one of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Why does it sound like that? Is it broken? The pins on the cylinder are all shaped are shaped all weird. I don't think those are the pins. It looks like someone put something else on top of it. 
I think we're gonna have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? Music box. The pins on the cylinder look odd. We'll have to take it apart if we want to get a good look at it. Then if we go ahead and turn around, we have this desk right here. Uh, if we open up the front area, we get this. What's the deal with this? Is it, is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with a zero and end with eight, F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this is something to do with the number bases. We learned about those uh, with Lotus in a previous escape room, the the kitchen, I believe it was. You know, the one with the freezer. Uh, if, if we look at the file screen again, uh, numerical systems chart. Uh, numerical system chart found in the captain's quarters. 10 in base 10 is written as A in hexadecimal. Therefore, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and so on. This chart showed the rules for each numerical system. Or numeral system, excuse me. We go ahead and, well not go back, but if we tap on this keyboard, or not really keyboard, but this thing of buttons here that looks kind of like a keyboard, there's a bunch of weird buttons on here. You probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Um... So I wonder if there are any noticeable, like, recognizable locations. I think... Okay, I noticed the hospital room there. Uh, bottom left is... I think that's the room with the Funyarinpa? I think? Because that's like a hallway uh, with something on the wall there. Uh, top right there, I think, is... Is that the... No, that's not the area we woke up in. That might actually be a room that we haven't gotten to yet. So, in the comments, if you have played this game before, let me know if you recognize any of the areas here on the uh, monitors. Um, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. Well, I guess it, well, I guess it does change the... the hell is this? Well, I certainly recognize what's here on the top middle monitor, because that is over on the wall. Uh, but we have to enter a cutscene first. <laughs> Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter each spelling out zero. Junpei felt as though he was being mocked. The real villain was somewhere, laughing at him. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Her voice was almost too low to hear. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured toward the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero's one of us. Yeah, right. I know it's important to figure out who this guy is, but don't you think we should figure out how to get out of here first? But... Please, I don't want to waste any more time. Clover looked miserable, as if she could start crying at any moment. Junpei just didn't have the heart to tell her no. Alright, sure thing. Was his mind playing tricks on him, Junpei wondered. For a moment, he could have sworn he'd see seen Clover smile. Hmm. Well, there's a door behind the desk here that we can't really get into, uh, but there's this door over here leading back to this uh, communications room. Uh, we got a box here with uh, small screwdrivers. Hmm. A set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we can use them to dismantle small devices? Small set of, set of small screwdrivers. Perfect for screwing and unscrewing small screws. We also, I think we have... Yep. Over here in a drawer, we have some ink. A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. Thanks, Ace. Some black ink. <laughs> a bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Uh, some drawers over here give us... Hey, what's this? It's blank. There's nothing written on it. A piece of paper. <laughs> and Ace is just like, A piece of paper. It's made of paper. White piece of paper. It's blank. 
so I'm gonna go ahead and use these screwdrivers on the music box. Uh, cause Clover suggested taking it apart earlier. Alright, the screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. So if we combine this with the ink right here, um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder, we get a dirty cylinder. And if you combine this with the piece of paper, now I just gotta roll the cylinder across a piece of paper. If I'm right, the ink should. We get the Morse code chart. You just as you suspected, right? Now you have a pattern of dots and lines on the paper. I imagine it's Morse code. These dots and lines are the dots and dashes of Morse code. I forgot to examine some of the other stuff that uh, I combined, uh, but I'll make sure to, if I, I'll make sure that when we go back through this room, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that later in this game, when we go back through this room eventually, I'll be sure to examine that stuff again. Junpei, what are you doing? We have to, we have the Morse code message. Certainly you know what to do next. This just... Yeah, that's pretty much the message that you would get in the previous escape room uh, when you ex would examine the stopwatch while, uh, while you're supposed to put it in into the door. But check the Morse code machine thing. Alright, I've got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen. I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. Thankfully, they just show the Morse code on screen, so just do what it says. Just quickly tap it for the dots, and for the dashes, just hold it down for a long time. I'll look up later what that's supposed to say. That's the last one, and yes! Excellent work, Junpei. Good job. You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. Sure enough. Before, if we didn't input that uh, Morse code message, this would have been locked because of this wire connected to it. But now, we've got this. A red file lay in the drawer. Junpei reached down and picked it up. The cover read, All Ice. But... Was it supposed to say, all ice? There wasn't a space between the L and the I. Were they trying to say that all ice was a single word? It was an interesting thought, but it left Junpei's mind quickly as he opened the file. What lay inside was far more interesting, and far more confusing. Each page was covered with strange characters. They looked like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horn an horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. There were many pages in the file, and each was full of these strange symbols. The hell is this? He didn't realize he'd spoken out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think I could? Well, you're pretty old, Ace. <laughs> what the hell? Junpei flipped through a few more pages. It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made to, he made to close the file. And something fell out. He bent down and picked it up. A keycard. There was a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbols for Saturn and the Mer Mercury keycards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Jim Pei looked over to see Ace examining the card. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. On the lower right, it said, Bottom Deck Library. Was the bottom deck a library? Whatever might be there, however, would have to wait. At the moment, there was nothing Jim Pei could do. He gripped the keycard tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. New material has been added to the file screen. Neato. Uh, I forget. Information about Alice. A file found in the communications office. It says all lice on the spine. All of the pages are filled with hierogly hieroglyphs from ancient Egypt. Now do I have- no, I don't have the keycard in my actual thing. Oh! There's something else in the, uh, drawer there. The unique key. A key with a leather case. It isn't metal. My guess would be ceramic. Junpei, have you found a keyhole that might fit? 
or the unique key of the tip is square. So, I forgot to mention this earlier, forgot to look over at it, but if we head back into the room with the dead man, uh, if we look right over here, we have a camera which was uh, showing this door on the uh, security cameras a little bit ago, but we also have this keypad with, a, with an area right here that uh, perfectly fits the key. So, go ahead and put that in. The control panel for the electronic lock. Looks like it's got a keyhole on the bottom, on the bottom right. Maybe the key I got earlier. Sweet, just had to put in the put the key in and now it's on. Junpei, look, there's a minus sign on the screen. There's eight of them. Probably means we've got to put in eight digits. Do you think you can figure it out? Um. So interesting thing about it is you'll notice, like they said, there's eight uh, individual digits, but you'll notice they're spaced out in groups of two, uh, in four groups of two, meaning there's probably like four individual there's probably four numbers we need to put in. Uh, and, and if we find any single digit numbers, we'll just have to put a zero in front of it. Speaking of zero, if we look back here, we have four things right here, Z-E-R-O. And you'll remember, right on that desk, we got the, where is it? Numerical, numeral systems chart. And it tells us about how you need to uh, use the numeral systems to uh, to get different letters. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, spell out zero. So Z, uh, it isn't on here, but Z is the final is the 26th and final letter of the alphabet. Uh, so 26 uh, plus 9 is 35. Now we just need E, R, and O. 14, 27, and 24. So 35, 14, 27, 24. 35, 14, 27, 24. Eight digits, huh? What I put in the digit number, I just press E. If I mess up, I just press C. All right, let's give it a shot. 35, 14, 27, 24. Hey, I got it! Yes! It worked! Good job, Junpei! Excellent. You seem to have unlocked it. Good work, Junpei. Alright, let's go! And with that, we are going to leave off this episode of 999. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!